So we have four very different kinds of talk that kind of, uh, I think the first three talks are somewhat related. The fourth talk is a little bit disjoint, but it kind of is more focused on a particular application that one would see uh, in a real social media network. So let me try to see if I can do a good job of connecting <coughs> the talk. So there is a common theme behind all the four talks, and that is, can we rethink how algorithmic analysis should be done, given the new data models and given the new computing paradigms like MapReduce, online computation, evolving graphs. Uh, you know, these are very different than what is generally used to analyze algorithm in a classical uh, setting. And uh, most of the, all three, uh, all four talks kind of uh, have a common theme, which is there is often a gap between what a theoretically optimal solution is for a particular problem and what are actually used in practice given the classical assumptions do not hold. Right? And so the question is, can we bridge uh, this gap? And if so, how? Right? And one way is to come up with new tools to analyze the complexity of algorithms and kind of move away from the classical way we analyze algorithms. The other is, can we come up with new implementation of algorithms in these new uh, paradigms? And uh, in, mo in, all, in all talks, the results are more illustrative rather than kind of more conclusive. And again, all talks, as you could suspect, use page rank heavily to illustrate uh, the ideas. Uh, but the fundamental question which we may want to ask ourselves at the end of the session is, can we take these concepts and generalize it to other problems? Right. Uh, so first talk is going to be by Ashish. And uh, again, he talks about uh, an analysis and implementation of some common algorithms and why it requires new thinking for modern data models. In particular, he focuses more on the MapReduce model as well as what is called the active DHT model, which is kind of like continuously doing MapReduce, but the reducers can actually talk to each other. Uh, he talks about simple strategies of how you could scale algorithms like cosine similarity and subgraph computation in a map reduce uh, paradigm. Uh, he, he talks about how one could do uh, personalized page rank calculation and various other nearest neighbor calculation in the active DHT modeling framework. So, uh, very nice combination of techniques and illustration. I think you should It'll give rise to a lot of new thoughts, I believe. And then David is going to talk about uh, primarily algorithms that uh, solve problems uh, that, that involve normalized Laplace in a random walk kind of matrix computation on graph. And again, he also focuses heavily on page rank, community detection, and link prediction kind of problems. And again, David is more focused on uh, asking the following question. Can we bridge the gap between practical algorithm and those that are theoretically optimum? So for instance, in the case of random walk, uh, uh, in the case of uh, Random, in the case of random walk algorithm, it's known theoretically that MCMC algorithms are theoretically optimal. Uh, there are cases where linear algebra algorithms are also theoretically optimal, but these are generally not used in practice. So are there algorithms that we can come up? So why, why, is, why are these algorithms not used in practice? And can we come up with algorithms that can bridge this gap? Uh, are there actually applications, real life applications, which are using those kind of algorithms, like MCMC kind of algorithm? And you know, part of this is also discussed in Ashish's talk. Like he also talks about uh, random walk algorithms and how you can scale it up on a Hadoop kind and DHT kind of environment. So uh, again, related. Uh, Ravi again uh, 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 investigates the page rank algorithm primarily under a very different assumption, and the assumption is. What if you have a graph which changes over time, but changes slowly, and you are only allowed to probe the graph a small number of times, a certain fixed number of times, right? How would you kind of do computation in this uh, paradigm? And uh, again, the que question we can ask after the talk is, can the technique that Ravi is going to talk about in this be generalized, can be generalized to other talks? And is this uh, paradigm where the graphs are assumed to change slowly, is it more applicable to other problems or not, right? So that is, again, another interesting thing. Uh, 
And finally, uh, I'm going to wrap up the session. So again, as I said, this is my my talk is going to be more rooted to some uh, applied problem. Uh, in particular, I'm going to talk about recommender problems, but those that pertain to the graph itself. And you know, for for instance, if you look at any social network, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, they 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 have numerous recommender problems, but the graph structure of the whole network plays a fundamental role in how these recommender problems are solved, right? And so I will talk about what are the underlying challenges for a commonly encountered problem by social media company, namely the feed recommendation problem. So I'm going to use feed recommendation for illustration, but uh, the, I, the, most of the challenges would apply to other social recommender problem as well. And then I'm going to go deeper into a particular problem, uh, which is that of estimating reputation scores in an unbiased manner uh, when you have some feedback on a social network. Uh, again, uh, I'll come back to that uh, later. Uh, when so this is it, and it looks very exciting. Uh, you know, so I'll let Ashish start the session. <laughs>